Welcome to the Better Together podcast, where we look for ways we can help each other as we minister for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm here today with Daniel Webster. He's the uh, director there of enrollment at Welch College. He works with trying to recruit students there. Got a lot of wide interest. He's also involved in music and worship, working on a PhD degree in that as well, aren't you, Daniel? That's right. So it's good to have you here with us. Thanks for stopping by, my friend. You bet. Thanks for having me. Now, we've had you on the Better Together podcast in the past talking about music, uh, but today you're wearing a different hat. You're talking about enrollment there at Welch College. I suppose this is a difficult time trying to get students to come, uh, many from miles and miles away, states away to, uh, to near Nashville, Tennessee. What's it been like trying to recruit students to Welch College during the summer of uh, 2020? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. A lot of um, a lot of the experts are telling us that students tend to get cold feet during uh, during times like these. Um, this is not uh, totally unprecedented in terms of higher education. Uh, students got cold feet back in two thousand eight during the uh, the housing recession, and um, these these things happen in higher education. Uh, Welch College, we're in a very unique situation, although uh, we do uh, hurt during times like these. Enrollment is our uh, primary source of income, and so uh, uh, we, we do hurt during times like these because students do get cold feet. Uh, but by and large, as uh, we have the security of the Freel Baptist denomination, uh, we have a wonderful uh, base of supporters, and uh, we have Free Will Baptist churches and alumni and folks who say, we love Welch College. Uh, we're sending our students, and we have third and fourth generation students who come. And and so um, we're, we're weathering these times, and, and we're, we're pushing ahead, and uh, we're, we're hoping and praying for um, a, a great enrollment this coming fall. That's good. And um, you're dealing with COVID-19. Lots of colleges have talked about that. We know the California system just went to uh, online, and then there are others kind of moved up their uh, start date. You too have some plans, uh, some things that you all are thinking about to help and address potentially a breakout that could happen in the United States in the fall. Talk a bit about what you have planned already. So, so far, uh, as far as our plan on campus, uh, we're still developing um, uh, our plan. Uh, uh, th there'll be some things that come out over the next few weeks in terms of dates and timelines and specifics. Uh, but by and large, uh, Welch is in a different position than many larger state universities. Uh, so for instance, um, uh, one of the major state universities in California just made the announcement a couple weeks ago that uh, they're totally calling off the semester, students are staying home and they're going to online courses. Um, we don't wanna do that. As long as our governor allows us to have um, classes um, we're going to have classes. Um, we're also in a very different kind of situation that we are already built to be small. Um, at Welch, your name, not a number. Um, and so we, we are already small. We like to be small. Um, think of us, uh, we like to think of ourselves as, as the mom and pop hardware store. We're not the big box store. We're not Amazon. We're not Walmart. Uh, we're, we're, the, we're the mom and pop store. And so at Welch, uh, we already have um, uh, a, a, a college that's built around community. Um, and we're already built around small class sizes. Um, we don't have giant lecture halls full of 300 students. Uh, we cap our classes at 49 uh, so that uh, our, our classes don't get too big and, uh, and impersonal. And so uh, we're already at a place where we can, uh, uh, I'll use the word that, that I hate, that I cringe when I hear, that's pivot. Everybody says pivot right now. Uh, but we are at a place where we're going to pivot. Um, and so uh, if our governor requires us to have social distancing during classes, we're prepared to, to implement that, uh, have smaller sections, um, have larger classrooms. Uh, if we have to have a classroom in the gym, we'll, we'll do that. Um, and so we are we are pulling all the stops out and we're doing our best to be on campus uh, this coming fall. Uh, and at the same time, we want to uh, stay in step with what our governor is expecting uh, of educational institutions. We want to honor uh, and, and be respectful of what the governor is asking us to do. So you're already in a position to 
take your students, spread them out uh, with the smaller class sizes. It's easier to have social or physical distancing. I think I hear you say, and you also have already planned a bit for how to deal if folks did uh, become ill. Uh, you tell, talk to us a bit about those kinds of preparations and how you're ready if if the worst were to happen uh, there. Yeah, and and obviously, Dr. Mooney, you, you have a son here, and so, uh, so so you know some of the things that we already have in place in terms of uh, medical help. Um, uh, Welch, uh, even though uh, we're smaller and personal, we have access to some of the best um, uh, medical uh, um, uh, facilities uh, in the nation. I mean, we're, we're just 30 minutes from uh, Vanderbilt, um, which is a world-class uh, hospital system. Um, one minute of the road from our campus is Sumner Regional, Regional Medical Center. Um, which is a, a wonderful hospital system and, and one of their largest facilities. It's just one minute up the road from us. Um, even still on campus, uh, we have uh, Mr. Russell Houseke, who is an active paramedic. He lives on campus. Uh, he works uh, in for Sumner County uh, as a paramedic, and he's also uh, the resident dorm supervisor for our men's dorm. And so our students are well taken care of. They have access to uh, any medical help that they would ever need, and obviously we take their health very serious. That's good, and I know a lot of people are concerned financially about how to afford uh, college. We've heard that a lot. Uh, you have set up some mechanisms there at Welch to help with affordability as well haven't you? Uh, we we have. I, and, and there's there's things that are in place for Free Will Baptist only. Um, but in terms of, of COVID-19, uh, we, we have actually frozen our tuition prices. Um, and well, I guess frozen is really not the word. We've actually rolled back our tuition prices to last year's uh, numbers. And so that will provide an additional discount for students. Um, and so it, we also have a COVID-19 scholarship in place right now that's available to all students. Um, if there is a, a need that arises in a family that is directly related to COVID-19, so some sort of uh, medical issue that arises with a, with a parent, uh, a, a source of income, a job loss, um, we are providing uh, uh, scholarships for that. And so a student who says, hey, you know, I have a need, I have an issue with my family that's arisen um, and my dad has lost his job. Uh, all that student would need to do would, to work with their admissions counselor, uh, to write a letter, to craft an appeal and to submit that to the uh, financial aid um, committee th through their admissions counselor, and and that'll be evaluated, and 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 we'll we'll, we'll give a need based scholarship uh, for any COVID nineteen income loss, um, and so 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 that's that, that that that's a big deal, and that was just announced a yeah. few days ago. So if somebody's thinking about, I don't know if I can afford it. Really, they need to give you give Miss Debbie a call and say, hey, uh, this is where we're at, uh, just kind of exploring and talk to you all about that and just see what the options are. And there may be some opportunities, it sounds like, to, to work those things out. Yeah, yes, that's exactly right. And I know that, that students tend to get a little nervous in terms of travel. Uh, well, you know, now I'm going to go back in college. I, I could just stay here and do community college for a couple of years. Uh, we, we don't want students to have to do that because of a job loss or something like that. We want students, they desire the community that we have at Welch. Uh, they know they're not going to get that same type of community, you know, back at the community college or, or going to school, you know, at a at a distance uh, and staying home in their pajamas in their living room. They desire to be on campus with their friends. Um, and, and, and we want that. Uh, it, many students have missed their senior year of high school and our hearts break for them. I, I have a niece. I have a nephew. Uh, they're both seniors this year and uh, they've got uh, graduation ceremonies this coming weekend. Uh, one will be an outdoor ceremony with social distancing and it'll be 30 minutes long and, and you must leave when it's over. Um, and the other one won't have a ceremony. And so our hearts are hurting for them and we know that um, we know that they are uh, missing out. And so we don't want them to miss out on their freshman year of college at this point. And so uh, we're doing everything we can uh, to make sure that we uh, are, are ready for them and, and can, can provide for them the, the community that they desire, while at the same time, 
uh, honoring the the wishes of of the governor and the medical experts and and doing exactly what we're supposed to do in terms of um, of all of that. And you mentioned missing out, like uh, we in the denomination have people that would have gone to Truth and Peace or would have been an E team or competing in various uh, activities. You all also have a plan to try to help them to not completely miss out on those things. Share with us a bit about that. Yeah, so Welch, are, we already have a scholarship in place for uh, Truth and Peace, E-Team, uh, CTS and YET uh, participants. Um, so our uh, there's, there's about a $3,000 potential each year. So for instance, if a student were, during their senior year, were to be involved in both um, uh, Truth and Peace and E-Team, uh, they would get a thousand dollar scholarship per thing that they're involved with. So, so that would be a two thousand dollar scholarship because they did both Truth and Peace and E Team that they could apply to their freshman year. And so, it's about altogether, it's about eleven thousand dollar potential uh, for Truth and Peace E Team uh, CTS Category D first place winners um, and or yet participants. Um, and so that, that that's a significant scholarship. It's it's regular that we see students that are able to provide two or three thousand dollars per year to their uh, to their school bill. Um, well, this year, obviously, Truth and Peace and E Team did not take place. Uh, uh, here at Welch, we're still mourning that loss because my department we host both of those events. When yet Truth and Peace and E Team are on our campus. Uh, my department and and Miss Debbie and Abby Settle, Anna G. Harris, uh, Miss Pam Buck, we we host them. We're, we're their main point of contact, and so when we don't get to see the students uh, and we don't get to be on mission with these uh, denominational agencies, we're we're very sad because we're uh, we're here to educate leaders to serve Christ, and that's exactly what E Team uh, and and Randall House uh, I am are are doing as well. Um, and so we're mourning the loss of E-Team on our campus this year. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Truth and Peace was scheduled to be in Oklahoma this year. Um, so what we're doing is we're still honoring the Truth and Peace and E-Team scholarship that is made available to these students every year. Um, as far as we're concerned, these students were still selected for these for these groups. And so the fact that they were selected is is a very big deal. Um, and, and we like to think of, uh, we, we, we give these scholarships every year, and when we give thousands of dollars of scholarship to uh, to Truth and Peace, I mean, there, there's uh, there, there's $140,000 worth of potential. If, if Truth and Peace has 140 participants, mm. and we give them $1,000 each if they come to Welch College, um, that's $140,000 worth of money going back to Freel Baptist. Uh, uh, there's, if, there, if there's 100 E-team participants each year. Well, there's another hundred thousand dollars of potential scholarship, and so a quarter of a million dollars worth of potential scholarship goes back into Free Will Baptist every year from Welch College. The potential is there, and obviously not everyone comes to Welch, but we, we view that as an investment back into the families and youth and churches of Welch College or of Free Will Baptist if they come to Welch College, and. What I love about that is if you're a Free Will Baptist family and you grew up in a Free Will Baptist church and you say, man, we use D6 curriculum and sang out of the Rejoice symbol our whole life and our student, they're going to Welch College, then there's an incentive there for you to remain involved in CTS and to remain involved in Truth and Peace and E-Team because that money is going to come back to you in the form of a scholarship. And so th there's a symbiotic relationship there. As, as we invest into families, it, it encourages them to keep their youth involved uh, in high school, in, in, in these other denominational agencies, uh, namely IM and Randall House. And so, again, a quarter of a million potential dollars going back to Freel Baptist every year. And so it is a loss not being able to participate in those programs, but that's one way you're trying to address it. And uh, even with CTS, I guess if their pastor indicates, hey, they would have competed in Bible memo or such and such, there's still an opportunity for that to count going forward as well. Yeah, that, that is correct. So we uh, we only award a we will award a thousand dollar scholarship to any category D winner in previous years. But this year we just don't know who would win. You know, obviously. Uh, so if a student says it can have a letter from their pastor that says my student was prepared 
uh, and ready to compete. We had paid our fee at the local or the state level. Uh, I know our, our, our uh, quarterly, we were able to do our local competition, but many, many uh, participants weren't even able to do their local. Uh, but if, if they can provide a letter from their pastor that says, my student, I can attest that they were prepared, they were diligently working on their piece, their piano song or, or whatever, um, and, and they were ready to enter, they paid the fee to enter in that state or, or local level, we will still honor that CTS scholarship. Uh, so really much more potential there in terms of, of the scholarship. Uh, because in, in years past, it's just been winners, but, but this year would be a letter from the master. That's great. So it's a way of trying to make the loss, uh, trying to deal with the loss a bit and and help folks to address or just to continue to move forward in this uh, this new phase that we're in. That's right. Well, thank you so much for dropping by to be with us, Daniel. And we appreciate you, Miss Debbie, Miss Anna G and uh, the rest of the folks working over there trying to work with students. And we do wish you well as uh, you get ready for the fall and as students are making their decisions and uh, we just pray God's blessing upon your work and everything you're doing there. Yeah, well, we appreciate you allowing me to, to be on and uh, uh, we appreciate your work as well.